Do you know who I miss? Woolly mammoths. <laughs> bring back woolly mammoths. Is it responsible to bring back woolly mammoths from a bygone era? Or if your project is literally the plot line of a terrifying film, in this case Jurassic Park's not that terrifying, except for, you know, the water, dong, dong. Should you do it? And who wants to go to all this trouble for what is essentially a hairy elephant? <coughs> Mammoths, them hairy elephants of yesteryear, let's get them back. 10,000 years after woolly mammoths vanished from the face of the earth, scientists are embarking on an ambitious project to bring the beasts back to the Arctic tundra. Cool. I mean, so part of me, when I hear something like this, part of me is like, I fucking would love that, wouldn't you? Love seeing that, a lovely mammoth, like big hairy elephant. Wouldn't you want to caveman it down a bit? I'm vegan, I'm vegan. But another part of me thinks, hmm, I don't know about that. Is that God's domain? Are we in Frankenstein territory now? Is this right? Is this right to bring back this woolly mammoth? The prospect of recreating mammoths and returning them to the wild, I mean, that's mad, isn't it? Like, we've got a mammoth, on you go, some. They'll rampage through the tundra, I tell ya. And returning them to the wild has been discussed for more than a decade. But on Monday, researchers announced fresh funding they believe could make their dream a reality. My dream is to have mammoths. The boost comes in the form of 15 million raised by the bioscience and genetics company Colossal, co-founded by Ben Lamb, a tech and software entrepreneur, and George Church, a professor of genetics at Harvard Medical School, who has pioneered new approaches to gene editing. The scientists have set their initial sights on creating an elephant-mammoth hybrid by making embryos in the laboratory that carry mammoth DNA. The starting point for the project involves taking skin cells from Asian elephants which are threatened with extinction and reprogramming them into more versatile stem cells that carry mammoth DNA. I bet there's someone watching this that knows what project this will lead to. You know how you always get a nice cosy PR story at the beginning of some project? Mammoths, I love those guys. What like Mr. Snuffleupagus from Sesame Street? Bring them on home, baby. Someone in the comments below, I bet you that you know watching this, they'll do this and then what they'll do is they'll use that technology to create mutant Nazi velociraptor police that will rampage into your house and vaccinate you in the brain. You know, there's always like some sort of sly angle, isn't there, when something comes across cross cozy like this. The particular genes that are responsible for mammoth hair, insulating fat layers and other cold climate adaptions are identified by comparing mammoth genomes extracted from animals recovered from the permafrost with those from the related Asian elephants. I've always thought mammoths like unicorns, like unicorn, just a horse with a horn on its snout. Mammoth, you're just a hairy elephant. That's what I'd chant at it if I was at a football match and one showed up, which now is a possibility if one rampages out of the zoo and straight into the London Stadium. These embryos would then be carried to term in a surrogate mother or potentially in an artificial womb if all goes to plan. Oh, that's the bit that's a bit mad, isn't it? An elephant with a sort of a mammoth in its belly or some big suspended uterus in some like, facility somewhere, probably in CERN, where they do the hydro collisions. You, know, you can't see much with this whizzing them electrons about. Come next door, there's a bloody airy elephant in a big, great, bloody great plastic bag full of antifreeze. I know quite a lot about science. The hurdles are far from trivial. The researchers hope to make their first set of calves in six years. Our goal is to make a cold resistant elephant, but it's gonna look and behave like a mammoth, not because we're trying to trick anybody. <laughs> Good, we've had enough of that in the world of science. But because we want something that is functionally equivalent to the mammoth, that will enjoy its time at minus 40 C, and do all the things that elephants and mammoths do, in particular knocking down trees, Church told the Guardian. Well, you especially want them to knock down trees, bloody hell. The project is framed as an effort to help conserve Asian elephants by equipping them with traits that allow them to thrive in vast stretches of the Arctic, known as the mammoth steppe. But the scientists also believe introducing herds of mammoth elephant hybrids to the Arctic tundra may help restore the degraded habitat. For example, by knocking down trees, the beasts might help to restore the former Arctic grasslands. I like the idea that they're thinking these mammoths are going to do some like landscaping and stuff. It's really a lot of pressure for the mammoths, if you ask me. They've been conjured up back from the ancient past, released into a completely new world. No sooner do they arrive than they're told that they've got a landscaping job. Right, crack on with that. And I'd like one of them swingy chair things. I suppose what underlies this, if you want my actual opinion, is I think it's delightful and exciting, the idea of meeting these creatures of yesteryear and the endeavours embarked upon by the scientific community, always inform me with their ingenuity. I love that stuff. I think it's marvellous and magnificent what's been achieved in technology and medicine. But I feel that we ought 
have too a holistic and totalitarian perspective that uh, I suppose some of you will think might align with terrifying globalistic ideas, which I'm not down with at all. I'm not down with a kind of one world, new order, take away everyone's freedom type deal. I'm much more in a democratic devolution. Everyone should be in charge of their own lives. You know, leftist, libertarian anarchism, if you like. But what I feel when it comes to scientific endeavour that is that we should be focusing our efforts on creating a beautiful world for the people and creatures and plants and everything that are here now. That we oughtn't be pursuing profit or novelty, we ought be pursuing solutions to our very evident and real problems. That science is somewhat in need of a makeover because of the way that the pharmaceutical industry, which I recognise is just one branch of science, science multiplied by capitalism, but all science is a subset of capitalism, very difficult to get any science done if there's no profit available anywhere down the line. You know, I'm sure people involved in that field would be able to explain that better than me. I sincerely hope so. So I suppose my truest point amidst all the mayhem of the hairy mammoths and the mammoth gardeners is that Oughtn't we as a species be collectively focused on our general betterment? Oughtn't that include individual freedom for all of us, collective togetherness where possible, the use of science to create real utopias, reduce labour and create a world where people are as much as possible free from suffering and free to pursue awakening through service to others, through the realisation of love? That's impossible, that's ridiculous. We're just about to bring back mammoth gardeners. Don't tell me that's ridiculous. This is stuff that's featured in every single religion and theology and scripture that we've ever produced since we could paint on caves when we were, in fact, painting mammoths, as a matter of fact. Not all scientists suspect that creating mammoth-like animals in the lab is the most effective way to restore the tundra. My personal thinking is that the justifications given that the idea you could geoengineer the Arctic environment using a herd of mammoths isn't plausible, said Dr. Victoria Herridge. I've got to agree with you there, Doctor. Bringing back a bunch of mammoth gardeners to create new landscapes seems to me somewhat fanciful. I mean, if the next step is to bring back, you know, diplodocuses, you can't immediately ask them to build you a conservatory. Their tails are too long, their hands are too small. Are they even going to have feathers? What kind of creatures are they going to be when we get them back? The scale at which you'd have to do this experiment is enormous. You are talking about hundreds of thousands of mammoths, <laughs> which each take 22 months to gestate and 30 years to grow to maturity. I suppose one of the things that's wonderful about this story is the scale and scope of ingenuity available that we could be creating wonderlands, growing new robust foods, incredible opportunities to alter, preserve, protect and help our planet to flourish and thrive. While this is a novel, humorous, silly, daft, delightful story, it alludes to the kind of common misdirection that takes place, the kind of diffuse nature of many of our supreme endeavours, that we're chasing after excellence in one area while forgetting that we are inadequate in so many, looking to create great totems and trophies in one aspect of cultural life where a great many people are suffering and starving elsewhere. I would love to live in a world where woolly mammoths are creating sort of beautiful steppe territories, smashing down trees, doing all sorts of wonderful stuff, as long as it was part of a collective ideology that included more equality, less suffering, awakening, democracy and freedom for all. Part of an awakening that includes lovely airy elephants doing a bit of a garden, a bit of gardening work on the side is ingenious. Mammoths being brought back into the chaotic world that we currently inhabit is just another piece of madness. If you enjoyed that video, let me know in the comments below. Please consider subscribing to my Luminary podcast, Under the Skin, where I talk about all sorts of crazy stuff the whole time with genuine experts that you will love. Plus, there's meditation on there as well, which, you know, God knows you're going to need. If you want a bit of reflection, go over to my side channel, Awakening, where there's all sorts of techniques and ideas about how you can improve yourself. Subscribe to that. And if you enjoyed this crazy little video about the world of science, have a look at this comparable one. Sign up to my mailing list at russellbrand.com. And if you're in the south of England, Come check me out on tour if you want to. Thank you. Mm -hmm.